Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home, and we wish you a blessed Advent. Amen. Well, we want to hear from you, so send us an email with your question or your comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today we have a great guest. His yeah. name is Dr. Ryan Hanning. He is a homesteader and scholar, father of many. Their latest is on their way. It's nine wow. children, right? And he, you could go to his website. It's ryanhanning.com. And so yeah. we're going to have a wonderful conversation with him about the beauty of family, of everything that is true and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I'm real excited yeah, about I mean, he's, having him He's doing him great on. work. He's a professor at the University of Mary. He's mm -hmm. also doing work at Steubenville University. Most of our people know about that. And then he throws in this whole thing of the land and, yes. and homesteading. And so I don't know how that all fits together, but he's going to share about all of that. And Joy, we had a wonderful you know, weekend. Gaudete Sunday, and we, we went to did. Our Lady of Sorrows Church. We go there each year, and they have a birthday party for Jesus. Yes. And we get to see, they, they all, they've been collecting items for our pregnancy medical center. And then they have uh, the nativity, and they do the, the uh, Christmas story. And it's a wonderful, wonderful time. And they also, with the Knights of Columbus, they're part of a contest of making all these beautiful images. Mm -hmm. Each of the children, whether they paint them or create them in whatever way. And so hopefully we'll get to see a lot of those. And it's a real competition about um, sharing Christmas. Yes. It's a wonderful catechetical, educational, uh, arts time. And uh, it was wonderful. We had a wonderful time. I also got to share there. And then also another parish in our diocese, Prince of Peace, had a birthday party for Jesus. And they also took a collection um, for the babies at our pregnancy medical center. Yeah. So it's just another expression of love, another way to outreach and yeah. say, uh, Christmas isn't always about receiving, it is about giving yeah. to the other. And the children were so beautiful and they put on the little play yeah. and um, it was absolutely precious. And our hearts were filled with more joy yes. on Gaudate and, Sunday. You know, Christmas is so commercialized and, and maybe even some families aren't doing a good job of sharing about it. But I suggest you having something like this at your parish, where for weeks they're collecting items for what? For this center that helps children to come into the world. Yes. Um, and then they act out the Christmas story, the Christmas play. This gets into them forever. These kids will grow and say, I remember when, you know, I was an angel, or mm -hmm. I remember that I read the gospel lesson. The, the person who read the gospel lesson of the birth of Jesus memorized it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so this is raising the children up. The mm -hmm. church saying, this is the good news of Jesus Christ. This is what Christmas is about. And uh, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Good news of great joy that a child is born in the city of David. John Paul II, now John, St. John Paul II said, Christmas is about this child and about every child yes. being precious. And so it was just a wonderful time. There's plenty more to come with Ryan Hanning. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. home with Jim and Joy and today we bring to you Dr. Ryan Hanning. He is a homesteader, a scholar. You could go to his website ryanhanning.com. We're gonna have a wonderful show but first we want you to tell our family a little bit about yourself sure. so they can get to know who you are and we're gonna take off and talk about it sounds some like great you have things. a boring life yeah, very boring. <laughs> with all those yeah. children and homesteading and teaching at universities and so on yeah it's, it's a really really amazing how the Lord you know, he's never outdone his generosity nor his sense of humor mm -hmm. um, so I'm a father of nine husband of one number 10 is uh, gonna be with us very shortly we're due at the end of this month so we'll have our first Christmas baby wow. um, and so during this, this amazing time of Advent preparation um, we can't help but to be preparing our home mm -hmm. uh, for the gift of new life, not only in celebrating the birth of our Lord, but also uh, the birth yes. of, of our new joy. Um, so we're, we're excited, and uh, yeah, I have the opportunity to raise a beautiful family. We homestead in a little town just north of Nashville called yeah. White's Creek. 
and um, sound from like the city in New Jersey. That word, word homestead is kind of different. What does that mean? Yes, <laughs> by homestead, I mean there's no. We don't have a commercial farm. We have you know a few acres. We run sheep, goats, chicken, ducks, just enough to try to be in right relationship with the land. You know, mm -hmm. my my wife and I about 15 years ago, as our children were getting older, and we looked at what we wanted for them, and we're just praying. We we knew that our our personalities are such that we tend to, towards being very busy. And we figured if we're gonna be busy, we wanna be busy about those things <coughs> that kept us close to yeah. the family and close mm -hmm. to home. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we bought milk goats. <laughs> we started yeah. doing yeah. that and, and caught the bug. And now, uh, you know, 15 years later, we're out on some beautiful uh, property um, yeah. and uh, raising, yeah, Icelandic sheep that my kids take care of. We okay. have milk goats, meat goats, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, pretty soon we'll be adding bees. And, and really the, the whole goal is, is, is trying to, as a family, to be Yes. much more uh, intentional about yeah. the work that we engage in mm -hmm. yeah. and that that work would actually bring us together. Yeah. Um, Your father, Joseph, a farmer of sorts mm -hmm. back in, in Iowa, his family, and, and you know, as we speak about a number of issues with guests, and a lot of them even regarding sexuality and relationships and so on, and you know, Father Joseph's like, you know, we lived on a farm. I'm not confused about those things. You know, it, it's yeah. really, that's a part of it. Not only getting in touch with the land. It's like, well, this is how this works. And to some degree, it relates to human beings. And like, how could you make these arguments in another way? And you're raising your kids in that, saying, no, this is this is this is the laws of nature. That's here, you know. Yeah, it really is. You know, there's a <coughs> my, my sort of intellectual you know father's Wendell Berry's a great agrarian essayist. And he, he says this funny line. He says, no one you know plants an acorn and curses the oak tree. Right. Right. There's just a reality <laughs> yeah. about the you know the earthiness right. and the way that natural law works and. Um, for us as a family, it's been really about part, partly rediscovering this truth, too. I think, you know, there's many good families out there, and a lot of what society tells us isn't really necessarily good for the family or not really what our children even need. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm always reminded it's a biblical truth that, uh, you know, parents, even bad parents, want to give their children good things, right? Jesus tells us this. Right. Even a bad parent wouldn't hand his child mm -hmm. a, a scorpion when he asks right. for a loaf or asks for a fish. Um, but we don't always know how to give it to them. And mm -hmm. so part of my wife and I, our, our own discovery uh, through many trials, <laughs> many, many, many mistakes along the way is to try to figure out what does family life look like today? Mm -hmm. um, to be really, uh, really focused on the work the Lord has called us to so that my children become the men and women God has made them to be. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I would, would actually find delight in that. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that, that required for us um, doing something different than a lot of people. And it's mm -hmm. been a real joy. Yeah. What, why? Why is the family? Why do you make the case for the family being so central, so foundational, instead of maybe being a little bit more out, a one mm -hmm. among many? Why is that important for theology? Why is that important for the renewal of the church and of the world? Yeah, I always say, you know, renew the family, renew the culture. Um, the, the truth is, is um, our church has a lot of wisdom on this. I mean, imagine that the Lord himself, God could have came to us out of the ocean. He could have floated down, you know, like an Avengers movie <laughs> from the sky, but he came to us in a family. And the truth is, is, is as John um, Paul reminded us in his letter to the families, as the church is consistently taught, uh, the family is the vital cell of society. We're, we're not individuals. We're made for community. We're made in God's image and likeness and made to be brought up in such a way that we would, in our very lives, share in a community yeah. that would prepare us for communion with the Lord. And so the family is really part and parcel of God's design for each and every human being to come to know and love who he is mm -hmm. and come to know and love who God has made them to be. Mm -hmm. So the family becomes so essential, both theologically and then just in terms of natural law. You know, if we, we think of the three fundamental relationships we find throughout scripture, uh, the truth of being in right relationship with God, which as Catholics were, were, were blessed, you know, the, the entire Christian message about bringing us and reconciling us to God through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, being in right relationship with each other, this entire moral teaching of the church. But that third relationship, that third fundamental relationship, being in right relationship with the land, that sort mm -hmm. of vertical to God, horizontal to each other, and that, 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 that you know, vertical going down to, to the very creation. Mm -hmm. you know, in Genesis 2.15, we're, we're told to, to steward and care for the land. And so the family is, is this really, is part of God's plan for um, you know, the, the renewal, really, mm -hmm. of, of the church, of the renewal of the culture, because it's written into the very DNA of the family, which mm -hmm. is why the family is under attack. Yeah. And this is not something new. I mean, as a theologian, it was a blessing to, to study at the opportunity to teach scripture for 15 years. I taught comparative religion, uh, which was a, a real joy. Um, and you know, 
the truth is, is that you know, ever since the fall, the family's been under attack. Mm -hmm. We see this with, with the relationship put asunder between Adam and Eve, yeah. between Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, it makes sense that, that the family's <laughs> going to be attacked. It makes sense the family has to learn what the family is about. Yeah. And I think in many ways, and I speak for myself, we had forgotten what the family was about. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to, to rediscover that and to find joy in that. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite lines of Paul VI is he goes to Nazareth and he's there in the beautiful uh, basilica there. And he talks about the, the truth of the Holy Family. And he says the family with all the problems and all the challenges and all the messiness and the problems it poses, the perfect place for rearing children, <laughs> right? Mm. It's precisely yeah. in that drama yeah. um, mm -hmm. that, that we come to discover who we are. It's in those, you know, I think it's, Pope Francis Buff says it's the first school of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. John Paul II said he fell in love with love by looking at family love. Yeah. Um, so the family really does become part and parcel of, of what it means to be a human. Yeah, yeah. and, and at, in this beautiful Advent season that we're in, you know, we all understand the holy family. But God wants to make our families holy. Yeah. He wants, and, and when we, when parents are on the same page and we're doing a lot with intentionality of how we're rearing and raising and sacrificing mm -hmm. and being committed to, um, to one another in marriage and being committed to them as children. Um, what, what do you see as the challenges of the day? Okay, well, here we are in 2019 getting ready to end this decade and go into 2020. What are, what are the challenges that are facing us? Yeah, you know, most families, I think we, we have for the last, and for however long it's been, maybe it's been ever since the fall, this, this focus on radical individualism, right? That, that I'm my own person, I, am, I, I can be whatever I want to be, when the truth is, is God has made us a particular mission and purpose. And very often by God's design, we come to understand what that mission and purpose is within the context of the relationships that we have with those closest to us. Yes. And, and, and by God's grace, sometimes it's within the, the natural family, sometimes it's, it's like my upbringing. You know, I have great parents, loving parents, but you know, divorce and, and broken families are yeah. part of my upbringing as well. Um, and so the Lord can, can work through that. Yes. And so the challenge of individualism, the challenge of fragmentation, where people are so split everywhere, where they're not an integrated whole. Yeah. Yeah. I find this so often with my college students I teach, you know, they play a role at work, they play a role at church, they play a role in the family, they play a role at home, but there's no real integration <coughs> of who they are. Mm -hmm. And so individualism, you know, uh, fragmentation, materialism, thinking the material world will make us happy. These are the challenges that constantly tell families that in order for a family to be happy today, they need to support the individualistic ideas of each individual. Mm -hmm. Well, look, that's probably not the best advice. I know with, with nine children that each of them are very different. Right. Um, I know that each of them have different aptitudes and proclivities. And I want to support that. But it's very much within the context of the family that those things are going to come to serve one another, that my children can learn what it means to be uh, a gift to one another, given the gifts and aptitude they have. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of, of somehow that we need to, to fragment our lives to be, to be more uh, complete is, is also not true. Mm -hmm. No, we need to be the same person and integrate all those things, our work, our, our, our family life, our faith, so there'd be one consistent whole. So we wouldn't be split and, and, and feel pulled yeah. apart, but we actually be brought pulled together. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, for my wife and I, and this has been so much of our own prayer and, and, and the work that the Lord has called us to do is, is to remind families that of the goodness of family life and even in the messiness of family life, how God can use that to, okay. to really bring people to to his plan for them. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to, we think about the challenges <clears throat> regarding the family, and you know, there's always been challenges, mm -hmm. but I am really tempted to say I've never witnessed, maybe history has never witnessed what we're seeing now, and by that I mean the so-called redefining mm -hmm. of what marriage is to really eliminate the child mm -hmm. out of that definition. I mean, we, I, I've never seen this in America or, or in other places. It's been part of every culture, every place, everywhere, that a, man, a union of a man and a woman and the children born from that union is the definition kind of for marriage in the family. You can adopt and do foster sure. care and all that, but you have to have that union that can give yeah. life or you have the potential for life. This is an incredible challenge, this, this so-called, you can't redefine reality, but we're doing it in law. And so speak to that, sure. and speak to how we rear our children, what the church needs to be about at this time, so that we're not uh, condemning of people that, mm -hmm. that are thinking in these ways or uh, you know, call that marriage or in lifestyles that we don't approve, because we want to affirm their humanity. Sure. They, they, but we can't compromise on this. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's the truth that the church in every age mm -hmm. has to find what's good, beautiful, and true in the culture 
and, and, and elevate that and simultaneously reject that which is you know, ugly, false, and dumb, <laughs> those things that aren't true. And so the, the church always has to navigate that. And I really think for our time that the big challenge is the challenge of the family. Mm -hmm. And so the church has to elevate those areas where the culture does want to support the family, but then also speak directly against the heresies and those things that really tear apart families. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think the first thing that, that I always tell my students is to, to really reflect on the goodness and beauty of family. Um, and that these other definitions that might exist out there, whether or not they, they really do lead to the, to the type of things we want. And what we find is that they very often lead to more individualism, mm -hmm. more fragmentation, um, maybe more materialism, maybe there's economic you know, arguments for it. But, but and nothing injustice can, to children. Yes. Oh, there's a huge injustice to children. Yeah. yeah, but you can't, you know, once you start messing with natural law, um, you know, I, I teach a graduate philosophy course for years, and I, uh, I, I tell a story. I say, you know, if you're walking down the street and there's a man standing on the sixth story about to jump, and he says, look, I'm gonna jump, but don't worry, I don't believe in gravity, therefore its effects won't right. harm me. Mm -hmm. Now you have three choices. You can stand there and say, <laughs> maybe he'll jump and he'll fly away. Mm -hmm. Or you sit there and say, oh, it's not my place to push, push my physics, you know, <laughs> on right. my opinion on him. Or you stand there and you shout out and say, no, if you jump, you're gonna fall, mm -hmm. gravity is real. Yeah. Well, the truth is, is that just like natural laws, uh, there are spiritual laws. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is people are suffering horribly from the gravity that they're experiencing from the decisions and sinful uh, decisions they've yeah. made. And it, it's, it's really in those moments where we have to speak truth and great charity mm -hmm. yes. and say that the solution is not to compromise, right. but the solution in great love is to proclaim the truth that the family is beautiful yeah. in all its messiness. The family has a mission and that mission is to raise children who know who they are yeah. and know how to make a gift of themselves to others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that through God and His grace, God can build off the nature of the family to, to really redeem it yeah. in its brokenness. Mm -hmm. And this is the message that I think you know, the church and, and, and John Paul II so beautifully did this in his letter to families. And we've seen this time and time again, so beautifully in, in the world meeting of families that happens every other year. This constant proclamation, the family is good, it's beautiful, yes. it's true. And all the, po you know, all the problems it poses, but the solution is not to compromise on what the family is. Mm -hmm. The solution is to lift it up and to, to re-proclaim boldly mm -hmm. and with more love that the family is, is, is God's part of his design yes. Yes. to help us come into this world biologically right. yes. and help us to know who we are and what our mission is. Right. And to rediscover the joy of family. You know, um, when children, when our children are out shopping and they're with their many children and, you know, people say awful things, right? And I'm sure you've heard it all. <laughs> and it's like, don't you know what causes that? Mm -hmm. And so a great comeback line, yeah, I do. Yes. Love, yes. love yeah. causes yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and then people just like, oh, you know, like True you just love. gotta shut it yeah. down. Yeah. Well, let me share a show with you real quick. So I, um, when, so Gianna's traveling with me, my, my youngest daughter, and, yeah. and, uh, and she knows the story well. But uh, after our last one, little Jacinta is our two-year-old. We're on the every other year natural family planning installment plan. Right, we highly gotcha. recommend we it. And, uh, <laughs> and when Jacinta was born, I took all the kids yeah. with, without her to Costco to go on a big mega shopping right. trip. Right. And so uh, Rebecca's at home, uh, resting with Jacinta. And so I have uh, eight kids with me, and we're filling carts, we're doing all this. And I'm checking out, and I hear a voice. It says, hey, and this big man is standing there. And he's about six foot six, about 300 pounds. And he goes, come here. And I walk over to him, and in the middle of Costco, he gives me a high five. Oh, good. And he goes, I'm here with three. I'm giving my wife a day off, and I'm stressed. I don't know how you're doing it with nine. <laughs> we sat there in the middle of Costco, and about seven dads came and joined us. Mm. And we just ate pizza. The kids ran around. We had yeah. smoothies and, and yeah. ice cream. Oh, and you know, for a moment, we just shared in the goodness, mm -hmm. you know, in the craziness, of course, but that goodness of family life. Mm -hmm. There is so much. Uh, negativity, so many things telling us that, that, that people are the problem, that families are the problem, that families you know, need, to, need to essentially lose their identity in order for their children to succeed. Right. And those things fly in the face of conventional wisdom. They fly in the face of natural law. And they fly in the face of what God has revealed about mm -hmm. the goodness of the family. Well, listen, mm -hmm. Dr. Henning, thank you so much for sharing the joy of the family, the importance of the family. We look for more on Friday of your sharing. Thank you for having me. You can me. go to Ryan Henning dot com. We'll be right back. Please don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, in a minute, Father Joseph will join us on the show. But before we speak with him, let's see what's happening with EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Well, on this week's episode, EWTN Pro-Life Weekly will have an expert analysis of the latest pro-life news from Washington. And then also this week, the team at EWTN Pro-Life Weekly will bring you the story of Kristen Hansen, a widow mm. who honors her late husband's legacy by fighting efforts to legalize physician-assisted suicide. That's right, yeah. hon, she was on our show. And as they do each and every week, the team at EWTN Pro-Life Weekly tells you how you can get involved in the pro-life movement right from your very own home. All you have to do is follow their weekly call to action. By going to ProLifeWeekly.com at this website, they'll tell you the action that you can take just this week to advance the pro-life cause. Again, that's EWTN, ProLifeWeekly.com. And you can catch all this on Monday on EWTN Pro-Life Weekly Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern and again on Sunday at 10 a.m. Father, your thoughts on our show today with Dr. Hanning and his reflection on the joy of the family, the importance of the family, witnessing to the family at this juncture in history, challenges to family. You know, Monday we talked about the beauty of sacred music, architecture, and art, and that's an attribute of God. Yeah. But there's also the beauty of family life. Mm -hmm. You know, these large families, I have so many experiences with large families connected here with EWTN and the shrine. And there's just a beauty. In fact, I was saying to a mother yesterday, she was at the Sister Servants, and um, I was saying, you know, you look like the oldest daughter. <laughs> and that's kind of a typical thing that happens with the mothers mm -hmm. that it keeps them young, I think, mm -hmm. because they're active. And mm -hmm. But I remember also an interview that I did with this family in New York City. And they had nine children and the other children who were often just only children, they would come to, to mm -hmm. that home because mm -hmm. there was life happening. Oh, yeah. There was a meal happening. And there's always and there food there. Was <laughs> <laughs> always something going on. And it's something beautiful yes. about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know? I think that, you know, I keep going back lately in terms of what the world needs and what the church needs to fecundity, you know, yeah. fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. I think the strategy God gave it to us in Genesis, you know, leave your families, Man and woman come together, they become one marriage, be fruitful, multiply, fill the world and subdue it. We're not doing that very well. I mean, There's some families mm -hmm. that you're mentioning, but the church even denies that right. principle. And then fecundity and fruitfulness <clears throat> in the gospel mission. Priests need mm -hmm. to be fecund, priests need to be fertile for the Lord. Right. And we have some priests, we have some churches, I think they're afraid to be fecund. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're all that thrilled if their church really grows that much. And yeah. same thing with the family. And same thing with the land, same thing with our animals, same thing with ever. God is fruitful. Mm -hmm. Multiply, fill the world, subdue the world. This is a very important principle and truth for us to declare and to live at this time. Well, I think in large families, children learn, I'm not the center of the universe, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I'm called also to serve others and to help others. And I've got to do my part. When I was growing up on the farm, we had our chores that had to be done and that contributed to the good of the family. And so you made a real contribution. You had a certain satisfaction in doing that. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't just all about yourself. Right, right. and that's, right. A, that's a great lesson to be learned it in is. life. It is. Right? Mm -hmm. You're going to learn it now, or you're going to learn it later, that's but right. you need to learn it. The humility comes around pretty quick in a large family, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Father, close us in a prayer with a blessing. Father, we thank you for those who are welcoming life, and as Joyce said so beautifully, how does this happen? Through love, through love, mm -hmm. through generosity, mm -hmm. that we've learned from your son, Jesus, Help us to be uh, fruitful and a fruit that will endure to eternity. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Don't forget tomorrow, Thursday, you can watch the EW10 Family Christmas Special at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.